One of the most talked about terms on the internet lately is the film look or the cinematic look. Many people love it and it's extremely popular. What makes this look so special is actually the classic films we are all deeply familiar with. Movies that have been etched into our memories over the years and made us feel something. This look has become so beloved because it truly stirs something within us. And that's why people are eager to use it in their videos as well. So today I'm going to show you the easiest and fastest way to achieve this filmic look in DaVinci Resolve. You will also learn how to maintain visual consistency between different shots. So without wasting any time, let's jump right into DaVinci Resolve. All right, I'm adding the clips to my timeline. We have three friends meeting up, going on a road trip, and then the next day begins. This last shot is different from the first two. So we need to maintain consistency even if the camera or shooting methods differs across all shots. That's why I included this one. We can think of it as a short sequence from a three scene short film. Before jumping into the color page, I want to show you my project settings. You can open this tab by clicking the gear icon in the bottom right. Under master settings, I've set the timeline resolution to 4K and frame rate. You can see these here, but they're not too important for this tutorial. Under my color management tab, I set the color science to DaVinci Y RGB, timeline color space is DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, and output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I will change one more important thing here, scroll down on the page and find 3D lookup table interpolation, and change it from trilinear to tetrahedral. This helps avoid issues like color bending when you're using LUTs in your project. Hit save and we are good to go. Okay, now we can move on to the color page. I will start by grouping these clips. Whether you have 3 or 300 clips in your timeline, grouping helps you apply the same color corrections to clips that were shot in the same scene or lighting conditions. This saves time and ensures a consistent look across your project. You can still make individual tweaks to each clip if needed. I'm selecting all three clips by holding shift, right click and choose add into a new group. You can name your group here to keep things organized because you can have more than one group. After grouping, you will see a green link icon in the bottom right. This means everything is ready to go. Once I group the clips, you will notice two additional tabs above the node editor, group preclip and group postclip. As their name suggests, adjustments in the preclip stage happens before the clip level changes and postclip comes afterward. There is also a timeline level where any changes will affect your entire timeline. This may sound a bit complex now, but I promise it will make more sense once we go hands-on. Let's begin with the group preclip section. I will apply a color space transform from the FX library to this node. These clips were shot on a Sony camera, so for the settings, input color space is Sony SCAM 3 Cine, input gamma is Sony SLAC 3, output color space is DaVinci White Gamut, and output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Tone mapping isn't needed at this stage, so you can just select none. Okay, now I will switch to the timeline section. Let's add a few nodes and I will use the third one here. Again, I will apply another CST to this node with the following settings. Input color space is DaVinci White Gamut. Input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Output color space is Rec. 709. And output gamma is Gamma 2.4. Under tone mapping, you can choose either DaVinci or luminance mapping. For gamut mapping, I recommend selecting saturation compression. This helps control any overly saturated areas in your image. And just like that, we have handled the color management for all our clips. Also, don't forget to name your notes to keep things organized. When we check the other clips, you will see that they've all been properly converted to Rec. 709. Okay, now I'm going back to the timeline tab where we will do most of our creative look work. This is where we bring all our clips together visually. The first node will be for contrast, the second for the look, and I'm adding a third one for texture. Let's start with the look node. Here I'm going to use a Kodak 2383 LUT that I personally created, but don't get mad and click away just yet because I'm also going to show you a second method using DaVinci Resolve's built-in film LUTs and how to use them properly. Of course, you can also use LUTs that you trust or have created yourself. Heading to the LUTs panel, I will apply my Kodak 2383 inspired LUT. This is before and this is after. Okay, now let me show you the correct workflow for using DaVinci's native LUTs. After the CST node, I'm adding two more nodes. You will find the native film LUTs in the film looks folder. I will use one of the Kodak options. If you hover over them, you might notice the result doesn't look great right away. Let's turn off the look node with my custom LUT for now. 
We will name the first node CST and the second node LUT. I'm adding another CST to this second node. We are essentially converting from Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4 again, but this time we are setting the output gamma to Cineon film lock. This is the important part. That way, any film LUT applied afterward will display correctly. I like this two node method because it allows you to clearly see how the LUT is affecting the image. When I toggle them on and off, you can really see the difference DaVinci's built-in LUT makes. I'm checking the other clips. We can confirm that the look is working consistently across all of them. We can turn off these two nodes now. I will continue using my own LUT. As I check the other clips, I notice that with my LUT, the images are slightly underexposed. We will fix those kind of issues at the clip level. But first, let's complete our look design. I'm going to start with the contrast node. I will increase the contrast slightly using the primary panel contrast. And then I will adjust the pivot to set the contrast point. At this stage, I'm not too focused on the overall exposure levels. These adjustments will apply to all shots equally. Next is the texture node. Here I will use the film look creator tool. From the presets menu, I'm selecting clean slate. I will enable halation, bloom, and the grain. I don't want the halation to stand out too much, so I'm lowering its intensity a bit. Same with the bloom effect, I will reduce it to about half. I generally keep the grain at a subtle level too, but of course you can adjust all this to your liking. To prevent halation from overly affecting the highlight colors, I'm also reducing its saturation slightly. Okay, now our look is ready. When we toggle the first three notes on and off, you can see we have achieved a cinematic feel. It's working well across all clips. All right. Now that the look is set, we can move on to micro level adjustments at the clip level. The key things that we need to pay attention here are, do white balance and light levels match across all shots? And do we need any secondary corrections like windows or saturation adjustments? Let's build a simple node tree. First node is going to be balance. Second is going to exposure. Third node is saturation. Then I'm going to add two parallel nodes, one for secondary adjustments and one for the windows. I will apply this node tree to the other clips as well. I'm selecting the two of them while holding shift, then middle click on the first created clip. Now all clips have the same structure. I will start with the middle shot. In the exposure node, I'm going to use the HDR panel. I will raise the overall exposure with the global wheel, reduce the light and pull down the shadows to add a bit more contrast. It looks good when played back, but our subject is still too dark. I will fix this with a window. I will create a circular window, shape it to match the subject's position and increase the feather almost to the max. Then in the primary panel, I'm going to raise the gamma and maybe slightly boost the highlights. This is before and this is after. Yes, now we are getting a much better result. Since this shot is stable, I don't need to track the window. Let's check the saturation as well. For quick results, I use the color slice tool. The global saturation slider gives a clean, accurate results. This is before and this is after. That's looking solid. I also like to increase the color intensity for a more saturated image. I will use a secondary node for that. In the curves panel, I will go to the saturation versus luminance tab and slightly pull down the far right point. This adjustment deepens colors in the highlights. A small but effective change. All right, let's apply these adjustments to other clips. Again, I'm holding shift. I'm selecting the other clips, then middle click the graded one. The adjustments are now copied. I'm checking the next shot. Let's see the window first. Yeah, I think it works, though we might want to reposition it slightly. Okay, I think that's fine. Overall, the image looks a bit dark, so I will go into HDR panel and bump the global exposure up by a stop or two. Saturation and density are fine, so I don't need to change anything. There's a strong red light in this shot, so I want to tone it down a bit. I will create a new secondary node and call it CC. I will go to color slice panel and slightly reduce the red saturation. This is before and this is after. Yes, definitely helped. Now let's check the white balance. I'm going to right click on the first node, go to gamma and select linear. This is one of the best methods for accurate white balance, which I've mentioned in my previous videos. Then I'm going to set the luma mixer to zero and then use the gain wheel to adjust the balance. It's a bit tricky since there is no clear reference in the frame, but I get it too close. This is before, this is after. Not bad, but the result feels slightly harsh. I will use the log wheels to balance the black a bit more naturally. Okay, it started 
feeling kind of artificial. So I will reduce the intensity of the balance adjustment. Now let's compare it with the next shot. I will copy that white balance over so they match better. I'm selecting the first node, pressing Ctrl C, then going to the other clip and pasting it with Ctrl V. I can shift it slightly toward green for a better match. I think it looks good. Much closer now. Alright, lastly let's quickly check the third shot. I'm copying the grade from the second shot. The balance has a bit too much green so I will pull that back just slightly. In the exposure node this shot is quite bright so I'm gonna lower the global exposure, reduce the light and deepen the shadows. This helps match the black levels of the previous shots. I will use the log wheels to reduce the shadows a bit more. Just making sure we are not crashing the blacks too much. I'm going over all the clips now and I'm very happy with the result. I think everything feels very smooth and consistent. We have successfully created our cinematic look. As I showed you earlier, you can also use DaVinci's built-in film LUTs, but keep in mind you will need to tweak things at the clip level accordingly. When we compare the two looks, here is the final result. Alright guys, with the workflow I've explained here, you will be able to get consistent results much faster. I strongly recommend trying these techniques on your own footage. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I would love to hear from you. If I was able to help you even a little, hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Goodbye.